What's up, y'all, and welcome back to the THC Temple. And check this out, man, because today, my favorite rapper, everybody's favorite dad rapper, made a comeback today. And if you don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about none other than your boy Slim Shady, B-Rabbit, Marshall Mathers, Eminem, you know what I'm saying? Whatever you like to call my nigga, like, Eminem is out here in the streets. And just a little fun fact, if you guys didn't know, Eminem's name is fucking Eminem. Like, that's one thing that always fascinated me, like, it's kind of like a cheat code, like, because I always talk about rappers' names, like, everybody back in the day took the coolest names, Biggie Smalls, Tupac, you know what I'm saying, Eminem, you know what I mean, like, motherfucking Method Man, Red Man, what, nigga, nowadays you got a motherfucking Lil Uzi Vert, Up Down, XYZ, like, you got, you know what I'm saying, you got every, like, motherfuckers, this shit is slim out here, shit slim than a motherfucker, niggas be taking names, nigga be Rick Ross number two, and motherfucking Fat Joe number 400, Said, like niggas got fucking code names and I swear to god in the next couple years you're gonna see ASAP underscore Rocky like it's gonna be a nigga from Jamaica like just motherfucking white dude too like just like their gold teeth like what's good with you like you know what I'm saying the game is fucked up out here in these streets on the motherfucking level of names and Eminem he just took a motherfucking candy like Eminem um I'm gonna just Eminem that motherfucking shit I think in the beginning his name was actually Eminem and his manager said look bro like you know what I'm saying your privilege only go but so far around here like motherfucking the candy is bigger than you right now my nigga today eminem might can change his name to eminem like fuck it like i ain't seen them little motherfucking peanut niggas on no commercials in a minute them niggas might be broken in a the motherfucker they might need that little that marshall mathers check but either way man like i said my boy came out and he dropped another album because if you guys didn't know that for that last album that he dropped was do -do 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 dookie man i've dropped like eminem like when it comes to dude i've loved a lot of his albums i think that relapse and recovery you know some of the albums that a lot of people think is real wonky like oh fuck that shit type type shit well i think those are some of his best albums because he's kind of you know i like that's why i called him a dad rapper because these rappers they starting to get old now like jay-z motherfucking all like the rappers from back in the day some of our best rappers some of the best rappers of the 2000s shit. even kanye like niggas is getting old now like these guys are old like kanye up there talk about poopy these scoop uh uh, uh jay-z talk about cake cake eat the birthday cake and all type shit like motherfuckers is really like at a loss for words at the day because like they old men rappers they old men like that's real nigga shit now, like i said like fucking we, even when you listening to like especially when you were listening to revival oh my god like it was nothing but dad jokes all over the place he was like, Nina, Nina, let me see your wiener, all type of shit. Like, it was just all types of weird. Like, this nigga is really, like, at he's at the end of the rope. Like, that's when I said, yo, look, it's really time for Eminem to just fucking hang it up. Because for a long time, I was like, look, and once you've entered into that debate for greatest rapper of all time, and I don't mean that new nigga debate, like, when you drop one mixtape today, and motherfuckers like, oh my god, he the new GOAT. Like, I mean, like, once you somebody like Eminem, you know, you change the game, you drop... Uh, dope albums, you dropped a couple classics, you know, you dropped a debatable class, you know, once you've made your mark as deep as Eminem has, you don't have to come out and you don't have to prove too much to us, you know, anymore, that's why I think these older rappers like 50 Cent, Jay-Z, I feel like they do feel like they have to, you know, kind of show their chest and kind of come out here and fucking puff up at the younger generation, not even the younger generation, but just, like, it's like they still try and show us, hey, we still got it, we can still spit with the young guys, and then they come out, they're like, yo, 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 let me get an Oreo Mick Flurry, but the machine broke, like, nigga, what are you talking about, like, you ain't gotta, like, you know what I'm saying? We like to hear lean, lean, zan, zan. Like, we, we're on a whole nother time now. And, and that's what Eminem tried to do. Eminem's like, oh, y'all like to hear Zan Zan? He was in the studio talking about Zan Zan, Zan Zan. Like, if you listen to Revival, he was doing a lot of shit. He was Zan Zan -ing. He was Black Lives Matter. He said White Lives Matter a couple times. I swear he said White Power. He snuck in a whole lot of shit. Like, he was pandering to anybody who could get. If you were alive, if you had a pulse in your heart, that motherfucker was coming for you. He would come here. I swear he had a couple of uh, 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 Jared Fogel lines up there. He said, Subway nigga, he want too bad. I said, oh my God. Like, he like dude like chill out bro like he was going nuts on that motherfucking album and everybody was like cool out man buy the album support him and shit i was like nah eminem need to support himself he tripping over here but then my boy like you wake up in the morning and you see dude drop a new album i'm like oh shit because eminem like i said dropping a new album is obviously a redemption tape now for one like i said somebody like me like, seeing him drop a redemption tape, it makes me feel good because I thought my mans was down and out. Like I said, I like, re uh, like recovery and relapse. Everybody, 
they were kind of wonky on it, but they still sold through the roof. I think Not Afraid, one of the best hip-hop songs of all time, just because it's so triumphant. Like, I'm not afraid to take a stand, motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a big, is it like hip-hop, you know, it's supposed to be, like, it's supposed to make you feel like you got big balls, you know, you the man around town, and that's, you know, a strong song to do that. Like, you can try to read my lyrics off of the paper before I'm laying. Like, he was really spitting on this shit. He was spitting like the bank account was on $10 and the motherfuckers were coming for the two towels in the front. Like, he was he was spitting like it was all about to go. So, you know what I'm saying? That's exactly what you want to hear from people. But then on Marshall Mathis LP2, and that's like another thing. Why are you making a sequel to an album nobody asked for a sequel to? Like, even somebody who was asking for sequels, this is the type of niggas that ask for sequels to movies that don't need sequels. Like, this the nigga who probably looking for a mother, he probably looking for another Twilight movie. Like, do you think we need another one of those? He probably need another Saw. Like, nigga, they done Saw eight times. Motherfucker, run away from the Jigsaw, nigga. You know he the old man. The old man that died and came back to life like 18 times. How many times y'all trying to see a Saw movie, bruh? Don't y'all know what's gonna happen? It's gonna be another puppet nigga. He gonna be making niggas kill themselves. And, like, that's it. Y'all gonna say, oh, whoa. And then you gonna walk out of the theater like, I don't know, bro. It wasn't good. As, it wasn't as good as Saw 2. And then he's gonna be like, that dude, Saw 3D was a classic. And like, you know, we ain't got time for the argument no more. Like, kill Saw. Kill all that mess. Kill all the redundancy. What was I even talking about? I need to hit this bow. This probably helped me remember. It'll jog my memory. It's a memory jogger here. That memory jogger. Oh, gee. <coughs> But yeah, I thought my boy Eminem was just gonna take the L. He was just gonna sit back, go into his little cave. And I was like, man, he really just needs to like bottom on out. My whole thing for a long time was I just wanna see Eminem lock into the studio. Him, Dre, whoever he need to make one of the greatest albums he can make, like he can possibly fathom of ever making, and then just quit. Like just retire. And that's another thing man, I feel kind of bad for him because you guys pay attention. Rappers can't really retire, man. Because if you look at the rappers from beforehand, like Cool G Rap and uh, uh, KRS One, I can't name a lot of old school rappers right off the top of my head, especially not with this memory jogger. And I need another hit for that. And y'all folks ain't got the time. But all the folks, when you look back, they ain't had the best contracts. So they don't make the best of money. So when you look at it today, they might have rapped for like 40 years. They may have invented rap. But motherfucker, you know, they ain't made enough money to just retire, kick their feet up, do other businesses and shit. And then at the other end, it's like an ego type thing. Like, they be out here, man, and like I said, they see Lil Uzi Vert. Yeah, 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 can't keep my dick in my pants. Oh, that was Triple X, R.I.P. Either way, but you see the little guys, yeah, yeah, purple hair. I got, I fuck bitches, Zan, 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 you know what I mean? They see that, and they make a hundred, a billion dollars a show, and then the old heads over there, like, lyrical, spherical, miracle, man, I got a chirical, miracle, put, you know, like, and they got ten dollars in the bank, and they be, you know, they feel kind of wonky, that's why I say they can't just do, they can't, they can't retire, they like, motherfucker, that's why they be puffing their chest up, cause they like, oh yeah, y'all good, y'all like that, I can do that too, and no, you can't, old head. You know what I mean? It's sad, but you really can't. You know, you can do your thing, but the folks ain't buying your thing. And that's what makes it such a, a jarring thing to become old in hip-hop. Like I said, the, we're seeing a lot of rappers now do it, you know? They're opening the door like Eminem and Jay-Z, a lot of these guys who trying their best to do it the non-corny way and Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar might be 40 dropping with some classics or whoever, you know what I mean? Uzi Vert, you know what I'm saying? Because we... Like, cause at the end of the day, we don't take older guys seriously. Older rappers, you ain't gonna take them serious in a motherfucker. But like I said, Eminem and now these guys, you know, whoever the older rap, the older the rapper that drops a hot album opens the door for, like I said, everybody to take an older rapper seriously. Cause right now you're gonna have a lot of 13, 14 year olds like, oh yeah, dude, Eminem's still the greatest. Like, you know what I mean? They weren't even alive when Eminem was in his prime. You know, I was barely alive, but I remember a lot of it, you know, coming up in it. And that's what made me all up on, you know, all up on it. It sounded like I was a stripper. I don't know, you know what I mean? But that's what I mean. Like hearing dude try to do a block boy JB verse and all type stuff over here. Look, I'm all for it. Like I said, because the bars and everything, not half bad on this record. You know what I mean? So we're going to break it down a little bit later. But I just wanted to give my little take, man. Like I saw my favorite rapper. Actually, you know what I'm saying, doing something about his downfall, because it's really sad. Like I said, I would rather Eminem have stopped at relapse or recovery, or somewhere, like I said, just, just retired, or just did whatever, other than 
make Marshall Mathers LP2 that, like I said, some people kind of took it, kind of whatever, but you're kind of, like I said, pisses on the legacy of the first one just a little bit, but then you come out with Revival, and it really takes a dump on every, that just takes a dump on everything, it's like, dude, stop now, so that's why I mean, like, it, it is kind of dope to see him, you know, instead of just stopping now when his legacy is tarnished a little bit, he get he get a lot of legacy points back. Like I say, ain't no telling what else he's gonna do after this. But the, I'm still I'm still in the one more album campaign. I want Eminem to just do one more album. That's all we need. Just do one more. Just do one a real album. Sit down with some folks. Don't try and make don't try and make what you think are hits. Try and do that same thing. I really want Eminem to take his time. Three years, whatever he has to do to make his final album so that he can just fucking retire. I think, you know, especially after rehab and he uh, uh, went away with Encore, which I kind of enjoy Encore. You know, it's not my favorite album to ever touch the fucking planet. So when he left out with Encore, an album that a lot of people didn't really enjoy like that, especially coming after great albums like Eminem, Show, Marshall Mathers, la da da he felt, you know, kind of fucked up. He was on drugs and he had to go to rehab and all that. So he felt like he fucked a lot of his legacy up then. So he was like, okay, I got to get it back then. So it's when he dropped relapse and people were, it's like Eminem didn't really notice that people, no matter what you dropped, especially at that era in time when he came back in like 2008, 2009, people are going to find something to pick apart about it anyway. Just like the same way they were doing when he first came out. But there was so many dick riders that he couldn't really see the haters like that. Now the dick riders are kind of leveled out and the haters, are, you know what I mean? So he couldn't really see and the internet's there. It's kind of heightening it all. He couldn't really take it, man. And he started, okay, I got to prove to these guys. This is going to get him here. And he hasn't really never gotten us. But this one's doing the firestorm. Hope, hopefully this one here, you know, it gives him what he needs, you know, to let him know that, hey, you know, the people fucking still enjoy you, Eminem, but it's only when you're doing something really organic. You know, even this one here, this album here ain't totally organic. But you can tell he had some fire like, fuck, dude. Like, niggas is really dogging me. Like, niggas is really shitting on me. I gotta do, I'm Eminem. Like, is that, that's what, because when he was making revival, it's like he said, okay, I gotta cash a check. You know what I mean? Like, tuition's gotta get paid. I got a daughter, like I said, I got a daughter in fucking college and all type of shit. She need fucking houses and cars and niggas and bitches. Like, you know what I mean? Like, but on this one here, he knew it was time to go because motherfuckers was like bro we not accepting that revival shit and as a matter of fact we damn near about to flush you down the toilet so he's like uh-uh ain't nobody flushing me down the toilet i ain't going back to the trailer parks at eight mile y'all niggas crazy y'all can go back i ain't going back motherfucker we can go back shoot eight mile too y'all can give me 20 million dollars like will smith well, motherfucker we ain't doing i ain't staying there not two days like motherfucker stop no so either way man like i said it's really good to see uh, old flame come back to the game you know what i mean that's 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 what 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 better can you see than that either way i'm gonna hit this bow get up out of here y'all tell me if y'all checked out a new eminem album if you don't like eminem if you love eminem you know what i mean eminem's probably your baby daddy or some type shit like, you know motherfuckers always got some of the craziest memories like yo man i remember i listened to an eminem song at the skate rink I was about to shoot a nigga in the back of the head, but I like, you know, like niggas got ch life changing stories about all types of songs and albums. So, what's your life changing story? Alright, y'all.